In this video, I'll be attempting to restore this very sort of unhappy Acorn A5000. This is actually my uncle's old machine, and it sat in my granny's house for years, probably 15-20 years. And when I was younger I used to go and play with this, and I think this is actually the machine that probably got me into vintage computing. However, recently I sort of suddenly had a massive brainwave of, this is one of those Acorns that has a CMOS battery that can leak in it, and this has been sitting in storage for a very long time. Um, so we're going to have to try and take a look at that, see if, see if there is any damage, restore it and get it working again. So, when I turn the machine on, and I'll hold in the R key which will do a full CMOS reset, you'll see that the floppy drive LED starts blinking. This is actually a binary code and it's indicating a fault condition. However, if we keep holding the button down long enough, we'll see it will boot into supervisor mode. So the machine isn't completely dead, it does at least you know, get into supervisor mode. So this is, is indicating that there is a fault with the CMOS. So it could be a dead, just, a, just a dead battery and fixing that will be fine, or there could be actually a battery leakage that's caused more damage. So we need to wait a little while, one, while it does that blinking, and there we go, now it's going to... Okay, we go, and now we're in supervisor mode. Um, I also do apologise for having to film a CRT here. Um, I'm going to try and adjust the camera a little bit, but it's, it's flickering. Unfortunately this machine also detects its screen resolution, so are the screen settings, so if you use a modern LCD monitor it can't detect that and then it drops down to like a really low resolution black and white mode that no monitor can display. So yeah, it is flickering but we'll try and cope. Um, I'll try and adjust the camera now and see if we make that a little bit better. Okay, so I've decreased the shutter speed there so now it's flickering a bit less. So here we are at the Acorn Supervisor prompt. You can do things like run help here. Oh, you can spell properly. And it'll give information. You can set various settings on this but it is a bit unhappy. So if we run modules that's listing all the modules that are installed in the system and there's a lot less here than there should be as far as I'm aware there should be things like desktop in here and obviously if I run desktop it just says it cannot be found whereas that should take you into the desktop environment so it seems to be that the CMOS has lost all of its settings so what we're going to have to do is take the machine apart and find the battery assess how badly it is damaged if it has leaked, it probably has and figure out you know, how much damage there is I'll pl I plan on replacing that battery with a couple of double A's, but it really depends on how much damage is caused to the CMOS circuitry. These machines tend to sort of fail in about four different ways. Either the battery is just sort of leaks a little bit, you clean it up and it's fine, or it leaks and starts damaging traces around the CMOS area. At that point you can usually rebuild it by just putting a couple of wires in to replace those traces. If it gets worse than that, it might actually damage like the CMOS chip itself. At that point you may have to actually completely rebuild the CMOS circuitry on a separate board and attach it in. You can also buy pre-made module modules that do the CMOS functionality. Thankfully the parts for the CMOS are still manufactured so you can do that fairly cheaply. In really severe cases the battery of damage is so severe it reaches up towards the CPU and starts eating away at that. And once it's done that the machine's basically done for because you can't, there's just too much there to replace and the parts aren't actually available. Thankfully, because the machine is at least getting into supervisor mode, the, you know, it shows the CPU is running and it's not too faulty. So that's a good sign, so we might actually be in, in with a chance of saving this machine. So what we'll now need to do is strip it apart um, and get down to the motherboard and see what the battery is like. I won't do a full sort of teardown video on this now. Um, I plan on doing a future video once it's all finished and working, hopefully. Um, and we'll, at that point I'll do a full teardown and description of the machine and actually do more, much more detail. This is purely just a repair video of this machine. So what we'll now do is strip it down and we'll see what the damage is like. Okay, so I now have a bit more positive news. After leaving the machine running at the supervisor prompt a little while, I then restarted it and it came back to the desktop. So if we hold in the R key again just to reset the CMOS settings and power it on. We actually reached the desktop. Um, again, obviously, I apologise for this flickering. I'll try and get an LCD on it at some point in the future. But yeah, it boots. So what I'm thinking is it was probably the battery was so dead it was just dropping to supervisor. And it is a rechargeable battery, so after leaving it on a little while there, it has now come to the desktop. Which is a bit more positive. Obviously, I still need to definitely get in there because there's something weird, but it's looking... At least the machine is now booting to desktop. And we can go in, we can, you know... It isn't seeing the hard drive. Um, now, that is because it's lost all the settings. The floppy drive is there. And if we hit it, it will actually seek the drive, which is nice. Um, I don't have any Acorn formatted floppies to test that with, but it seems to probably be okay. We can open apps, we can launch the calculator. There, we can launch paint. Uh, you know, and paint works. 
So I mean, this machine actually does seem reasonably happy right now, which is nice. Um, so yeah, um, that's quite a bit more positive. So I'm still going to take it apart and, you know, figure out what's wrong, but the machine is actually now alive and getting into a desktop environment, which is great. So yeah, let's shut this down and take it apart. I've found the problem. As I suspected, the battery has leaked um, and it has corroded a little bit. It's not nearly as bad as it could be though. Um, I've seen machines before where the actual corrosion has come all the way up to here and actually started corroding this chip here, whereas it is a bit more constrained to the CMOS area. So if we look at it a bit closer, um, you can sort of see the battery has leaked um, and then this is the CMOS circuit itself, that's the CMOS chip. It's got a bit corrosion on the legs um, and then this socket here has some sort of blue corrosion in and around its pins. But it isn't the worst I've ever seen. I mean, there are components that look a bit nasty. This resistor here, for example, um, is quite corroded away, as are the legs on that uh, capacitor thing that is there. So yeah, it's starting. It is definitely being eaten away. And actually, if you look under the battery as well, there's like brown gunk um, under there. It's really pretty nasty. So what I'm going to do is, first thing is just straight away take that battery out, get it out as soon as possible. Um, um, and then what I'll do is try and clean it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the th there's three legs holding the battery on. I'm going to cut each of those off just to get the battery away and then I'll attempt to desolder the actual legs themselves um, with the intention of putting my, my own battery in once I'm done. But yeah, it's just, it's everywhere. And there's like a sort of film all over the motherboard. It's weird, I don't know if you, it's probably quite hard to make it on camera. Actually, you can actually make it out there. Yeah, there's like a film here and if I sort of rub it with a finger you can actually sort of change it. So there is like greasy alkaline stuff that's leaked out and gone all over the board. I don't know how it spreads like that, like it's, the machine's always been stored completely horizontally but it's sort of leaked out and sort of spread all over this area so yeah I'll need to clean that all off um, so yeah we'll come back in a bit once I've taken the battery out and Just out of interest let's check the voltage on this battery um, yeah so we're getting about 1.4 volts so that is enough, like this battery should probably be about 3 volts as far as I'm aware or 3.6 I think it should be um, however the CMOS chip itself it'll retain anything with a voltage between 1 and 6 volts. So there is just enough voltage on that battery just to keep the settings, which is why it's now boot into the desktop. But yeah, that thing is, it's leaked everywhere and he's completely taken out. Okay, so it turns out I don't seem to own any sort of snips that can cut that battery off. So instead I'm going to just try and desolder it directly. Um, hopefully the solder isn't too hard to get off. Sometimes on these things it's a complete pain, but no, that's actually okay, that's melted off quite easily. So yeah, try and desolder this battery just straight away. Cool, that's the one leg out, that's nice. I will add I'm not a sort of soldiering expert, I'm vaguely capable of it, but I'm not in any way an expert. Oh, there we go, that's one leg, another leg out, or almost. There we go, that's the only one more leg to go. Ow! Things that you solder are hot. Just let that there for my thumb. There we go, and there we have it, the old manky battery is, has been removed, and yeah, that is quite, um, I think crusty is the word for that, that is brown gunk, um, it's actually getting all over the table, I'm going to have to wash my hands, because I'm covered in this, but yeah, that is nasty, so, yep, yeah, we can now start cleaning the board up. Okay, so we're going to do the first clean the motherboard just with um, just some kitchen paper, just try and get this brown stuff off it, just to at least get the worst off. Um, oh god, look at that. That's horrible. Um, so I'm trying to just wipe all this off. Being also careful with all the components that are around it, I'm just going to try and get basically under the battery. Um, yeah, that is quite quite bad. So I've now got all that under the battery off. Um, what I'm now going to do, it's all over the table as well, to clean all that up, um, is I'm going to use this, which is a solution of 50% vinegar and 50% water, which is just lightly acidic, and it absolutely stinks, that's horrible. Um, but the plan is to use this, just because it's lightly acidic, to neutralise the alkali from the battery. I found this inf information about doing this on some Acorn forum, I'll put a link to it. But yeah, so we're now going to go through and try and just go over the, all the area that appears to be affected by the leak and try and clean it up. Clean it up. 
and then afterwards we'll have to use isopropyl alcohol to then clean all this off. Um, especially because this is water, it's not obviously good to leave on electronics. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to go over basically everything here. Because the, the risk here is that if it's left unattended and not neutralised, the alkali is, oh, look at that. Uh, the alkali will stay there on the motherboard and it's just going to continue to eat away at it. So we really need to get it completely cleaned off and that will hopefully start to make things a bit better. Um, but yeah, this is quite nasty. It's sort of, it is starting to, like the more you look at it closer, it is getting quite bad. Like that's quite a lot of brown sludge coming off here. Um, but yeah, I'll continue to go over this and just clean all the um, alkali off. And hopefully we can get up something that looks a little bit cleaner and at least, even if it doesn't look great, it'll hopefully at least be neutralised so it's not going to get worse. Okay, so I've now finished cleaning this board down with a vinegar solution. Um, it's looking a little bit cleaner. Um, I've then dried it off just blasting sort of very slightly warm air at it just to at least roughly dry it out. I'll probably want to leave it a little while before I actually power it up just because that obviously did contain water, it wasn't alcohol. But now I've got some isopropyl alcohol, so I'm going to use this to clean it down. It's already looking a little bit better. There's still blue corrosion on a bunch of components that I don't think I'll be able to get off. It's probably just too... Just, it's just there, but at least it's neutralised, hopefully, so that shouldn't be as bad. Um, and I'm just going to try and roughly wipe it in with alcohol just to at least clean off any vinegar residue that's there. Um, and also turns out this is a CPU, so it actually was very close to the CPU. The, I mean, the corrosion was getting up to here, so... We were quite lucky because if it starts taking the CPU out, you're basically screwed at that point. Because um, you're not going to be able to get one of those parts, and even if you could, it's going to be a complete pain to fit. But beyond that, it doesn't look too bad. There's traces, that don't, none of the traces seem to be extremely damaged, and on the underside of the board, there's no damage at all. So, And it's the underside of the board that carries the IDE data, so hopefully it's not damaged the IDE channels at all. Um, if it does, it's not the end of the world. This machine does have a SCSI card, so I could use a SCSI hard drive with it if required, but the ID one does have a bunch of stuff on it I'd like off, so that'd be good. But yeah, so just clean down the alcohol now, and yeah, we should hopefully be able to do it. Now, one thing I have found is a circuit diagram of this component here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go through that and just check for continuity and just see if there's any broken traces. Now, if there is... I'll be a bit reluctant to replace it just because the machine does seem to be currently working roughly um, but I would at least then know for future prob if there's a future problem that that could be it and if the, obviously the, there's no broken traces then that's a really good sign that means that chances are we're good to go so yeah I'll test that out next so yeah be back in a minute once I've cleaned this with alcohol okay so I've now been around here cleaned up the alcohol and then tested it for continuity testing for continuity and this is quite hard because there's a sort of protective lacquer over the motherboard that makes it quite hard but at least I've been able to test a decent amount of it and it seems reasonable. Um, including this R301 which is a really dodgy, like really manky resistor. That is actually fine, so that's good. Now the only thing that ha does seem to be dead is this capacitor here, C159. Um, I mean I, I can't really test it easily because it's in circuit but the top's come off. <laughs> so like it's also been attacked enough that it's actually damaged and the top's actually cracked off the capacitor. Um, now, I don't know what that does. I can't find any information about it online. I'm just going to hope that because it was still, you know, it was covered in alkali before and stuff, that it's not actually essential enough to, you know, be causing a problem. I mean, if it came to it, I could probably, like, test around and try and work out what it connects to. Hopefully, it's, it's something like, you know, it connects to one of the... It just... It, one end just goes to ground, so it's pulling something to ground. Hopefully, it's something like what... You know, maybe this out of this socket here that there isn't anything in. I mean, because at that point, it's not actually going to affect the operation of the machine. I mean, it is something that could be replaced. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the value of it, so you'd have to sort of guess based on what other capacitors there are. But yeah, it wouldn't be ideal. Um, but hopefully, that isn't faulty. The chip seems to be reasonable. Um, everything seems to be okay, and it's been cleaned up, and it looks quite good. So yeah, what I now need to do is I need to put a battery back. So uh, what I think I'll do is I'll quickly fire the machine up without the battery. It's, it's not going to go into the OS because there's no CMOS settings, but we might be able to get it to go to supervisor mode and just see if we get something out of it. And then if we do or if we don't, it doesn't really matter. I'll go and fit the battery in, or the new battery anyway. So yeah, see what, see how we get on. Okay, so now haphazardly assembled the machine again on the floor. Um, I didn't want to rearrange this because I'll need that for putting the battery back in. But we're going to try and switch it on and see what we get. Now, it's probably not. Gonna, it's also not going to boot because there's no CMOS battery in there. But we'll see if we can at least get into the supervisor mode or something. I've also hooked the floppy drive up so we'll be able to see the status LED. So 
holding R again just to do the reset and see what happens. Well, you can something. Oh well, okay. That's... Okay, I get, ignore the screen flickering, I'm going to take the camera wrong again. But you know when I said it's not going to boot to the desktop? It just booted to the desktop. That's pretty good. I mean, I suppose it's maybe even if the CMOS battery has been removed, it maybe just hasn't been out long enough for it to lose all of its settings. So, yeah, we're actually in here. I mean, I, mean, I'm, I do apologise for the flickering. Um, but yeah, we can get in again. We can, you know, pull up an application. You know, it's completely, it is completely functioning. So yeah, that's awesome. So that means I haven't actually destroyed it, which is good because I'm always worried about doing that. So yeah, let's turn it off and get my new CMOS battery fitted. Now here's something really important you need to bear in mind when you do replace the batteries in these, is that the batteries it uses are rechargeable. And I'm not going to fit rechargeable batteries, I'm just going to fit a standard pair of AA's. So you need to bear in mind that when the machine's running as it is now, if you check the voltage across the battery terminals, that's setting at about 5 volts, obviously to charge the battery up. Now you don't want to be connecting normal, non-rechargeable batteries to that because they would explode in a different way. So what we need to do is wire up a battery holder with a diode in line to block that signal coming back, or block that not signal, block that power coming back up to the battery so it doesn't charge the batteries. Okay, so I've now installed my replacement batteries. This is just a couple of double A's. The chip can technically run on 1 volt, but it can do between 1 and 6 volts. Um, I had a double battery holder, so I may as well just put two in. So I'm giving battery, the chip three volts to retain data. All that happens is the battery's negative terminal is connected directly, and then the positive terminal goes through this little diode of sort of bodged in here, um, and that then goes to the positive terminal of the battery. This should, in theory, stop the five volts from the charging coming up into the battery, which I'll be testing. So what I'll do is I'll put the board back in, rig up the power supply, and then I'll switch it on and just without without the batteries in and just check that there's that five volts isn't getting to the battery terminals. And if it was, assuming it isn't, I'll put the batteries in and we'll see if the machine works. So we'll fingers crossed, hopefully this all works. And of course once this is installed, I'll put the batteries quite far away from the board. And just so if they leak again it won't cause any more problems. Okay, so after a slight panic there, forgetting to put the RAM in and thinking I'd broken it because it wouldn't boot, um I've now got the machine running again, so it's fired up and it's just sitting at the desktop again. So what I'm now going to do before I put it all back together is just check the voltages to make sure that the diode is working correctly. So if I connect, put the multimeter between five volt, the, well, the battery positive and negative on the board itself without the diode, you can see that once again we're seeing five volts. Now hopefully, if I connect it up to the battery clamp uh, clip here, we should not see that voltage. Nope, there we go. I have electronics real good and yep the yep there's now that diode is working so we're now not going to accidentally end up charging the batteries and blow them up so well not blow them up but cause problems so yeah so that's good so what we can now do is get this thing put back together so yeah let's put it all back together and see it all working okay so i've now reassembled the machine and i've put the battery up here so i've just zip tied it to this around the floppy drive so that keeps it away from anything if it did leak, the worst it can do is damage the floppy drive's sort of outer casing. It's not going to get onto the board or anything. So that's why I've done that. So it's not the most secure thing, but it's reasonable, so it's okay. The wires then just go down to the board there. Everything else is reassembled. So all I'm going to do is tidy this place up, put the case back on, and try firing it up and see how well it works. Okay, so I'm going to reassemble the machine with the new batteries installed. And we're going to turn it on and see if it works. So I'm going to hold in R again to reload, reload the CMOS settings from ROM. And we're going to switch it on. There we go. And we have reached the desktop. So that's obviously a very good sign. So the machine appears to be now working correctly. Um, hopefully it now will retain those settings. So now we can configure it. I'm going to try and tell it to find the hard drive, see if we can get that going again. The hard drive was very intermittent before, so I'm not overly confident, but we'll see what happens. So ID hard disks, increase that. Okay. Oh, there we go. It's worked. It's detected the hard drive with its actual name. Before it was coming up, just colon 4, and then that wouldn't actually work, but now if we go into that... We have the hard drive. The hard drive LED isn't working, that's a bit weird. I might need to go in and probably knock the connection loose or something. But the LED isn't that big, but big ideal, but here we go. 
you can fire up stuff and open stuff. So there's a sprite file so obviously it was drawn on this. And uh, we can go into various things. I mean there's yeah we've got games on here. So yeah. Never Oh no memory and system sprite area. Well that'll be some weird thing I need to figure out. But yeah we can, what else is there on here? Impression is that installed? Yeah impression still might be installed. Yep, and that actually works. So that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, we have a fully functioning A7000. I mean, uh, A7000, A5000. <laughs> so, I'm very happy with that. So, what I'll need to do is I'll switch it off and unplug it and just leave it. Well, leave it a couple of hours. I'll rip out the shop or whatever, and then I'll come back and just double check it's working. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy this is all running. So there you have it. I've saved the A5000 from the inevitable death by leaking CMOS battery. So yeah, the machine's actually working really well. Um, it's still not detecting the SCSI disk, but that was, I was having issues with that before, so at some point I'll play about and try and figure that out. But yeah, it's working, the hard drive being detected, and the machine seems pretty happy. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. You can also visit my website at camongray.me, and follow me on Twitter at camongray1515, and stand by for a future video of this machine where I do a full tour of it coming in the future. Thanks for watching.